Before we go this morning, we're going to focus on the arts. I'm actually joined by the director of the Council of the Arts, Liz Young. There are lots of summer events that are happening. If you want a schedule of all the daily happenings, just check out the website that you see on the bottom of the screen. This morning, we're going to focus on art in public places. Now, Monroe County is proud to be one of over 300 art in public places programs throughout the country. Liz has all the details for us this morning. Liz, thank you for joining me oh, again on the my show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> well, it is wonderful having you here, Liz. If you could, give us a little history of art in public places. Well, of course, art has been in public places. You know, you go to Rome or Florence and through the beginning of time in uh, Egypt, we see art everywhere. And America has, as you mentioned, about 300 public art programs that actually set aside one, sometimes one and a half or two percent of new building construction. And it is, you know, sort of traditionally known as art in public places. Monroe County's program started in 2001. It is by ordinance that any new building over a hundred thousand dollars that's built in the county by the county government or um, I'm sorry, 100000 by renovation, 500000 for new construction, 1% is set aside for art. And the Arts Council sits as the administrative staff. We don't make any of the decisions. We're just the staff to the committee, and each of our five county commissioners appoints a delegate to that committee, and they're volunteer professionals that you know fit into a certain category. We have an architect, we have a gallery owner, we have an artist. We have a designer, you know, people that are familiar with new construction, renovation, know how to look at a blueprint, know how to help make a decision, and then they recommend to the Board of County Commissioners projects to be commissioned at each of the different county buildings that, as they're built or renovated. Great. Now, does Key West have an art and public places Key program? West, they do. Mm -hmm. They do. And again, their city commissioners and the mayor each appoint someone to the committee. It's within the city boundaries. Um, there used to not be a financing vehicle at all. It was by donation, sort of on loan, where we've seen uh, perhaps, you know, like the Seward Johnson pieces that appeared around town. That was sort of just a gift or a loan to the city. But now they actually have a 1% art ordinance that was wisely passed by the commissioners last year. And we will start seeing some public art in the city as well as the county. Oh, good. That's with exciting. With some of the new construction that, you know, we, I think you've seen some articles about it in the paper, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. so that's definitely but we're But the Arts Council, because we're the local arts agency in Monroe County, we work with the county projects mm -hmm. from here up to Key Largo. Can you give us some examples of some of the upcoming projects? Yes. And <laughs> I know you put our website up, so mm -hmm. people can go right to the website, and there's a tab that says Public Art explains what we're talking about, and then we've got some great photo um, entries there for all the installations. There's tabs. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it, but I'll start north to south. Completed mm -hmm. projects. Beautiful work at the North Key Largo Fire Station, which is exterior um, uh, sculpture there. We have five commissioned permanent projects at the Murray Nelson Center. We have work in the Plantation Key office station there. We have work in, um, we have Let's see, Big Pine Key, the fire station, the community center. There's two different projects there. And then we have the Freeman Justice Center, which was done in 08 and 09. There are six projects, commissioned permanent projects. And then, of course, I think the one that's the most visible and the one that was my first big project that I worked on with the committee is the Key West Airport, mm -hmm. where, you know, really public art, over 600,000 people pass buy it every day, so that's uh, great. And then we've got some big projects coming along. We are um, working now on the Conk Key Fire Station, which is in the mid, about around, just, just below mile marker 70. That'll be exterior work. Uh, the Marathon Courthouse has just been renovated, so 1% was set aside for there. The committee has identified exterior space there. They're going to do some sewer hookup, and then we'll be able to place art there. And our newest big project where we did a site visit this week was the Stock Island Fire Station. Mm -hmm. Great. So these so are good it's, locations. It's great locations. The public either drives by or they're entering the building. And our commissioners 
understand, you know, the quality of life and the and the and the opportunity for artists. Absolutely, and it it just spices things up, doesn't it, Liz? It does. Like when you when you're driving, it's just so nice to see that. You we know, see the colors and everything. Absolutely, and you know, it's a it's a, a co county certainly. Uh, very rich with history of art and culture and each of the spaces that I've mentioned you know brought in a lot of the keys natural environment the artists are given some direction either you know fire related at the fire stations or water related or the airport there's some sense of history of as people leave there's um, a great uh, photo um, series of six very very large photographs that were done specifically for the airport. So as people are going back to the north, cold, they see these, you know, very appealing, peaceful, you know, strolling down the street in Old Town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a very beautiful Deborah Yates uh, take on sunset. You know, very contemporary um, transition to to sunset as you're going through security. So there's that feeling of we're very proud of who we are mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. supporting our artists. Well, it definitely helps keep the arts alive and vibrant down here it in does. the community. And Liz, as I mentioned, there are lots of summer events taking place. Oh, so if people want to know, just check out the web for the schedule. We right? just we just ordered our Keys Arts brochure for July, August, September. That's something that we hand out at the chambers and to the lodging. Mm -hmm. It's in a PDF format up on our website. You can go to the home page and click on calendar. It takes you to that big comprehensive calendar that you can sort by week, month, theater, music, or just look at each day, all the ongoing classes and workshops. Um, a lot of kids and teens programs this summer, too, that mm -hmm. we were thrilled to see up and down the Keys. Mm -hmm. Well, and the teens get a chance to work with some of the best artists ever, you know, oh down God. here. Oh, it's always fantastic. Yeah. All the studios artists are teaching at Art and Historical Society, mm -hmm. uh, Matacumbe up in Isla Mirada. You know, you're right. Yeah. We're blessed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> very, All right. Very blessed. <laughs> Liz, thank you so much for being on this morning, and Great I look time. forward to talking you talking with you more in the future. Thanks for having me. All right, that's going to do it for me today, everyone. Thank you for joining me and tuning in. I hope that you can check me back out here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and again at 8.30 a.m. Take care and have a great rest of your day. If I